My very first cooking job, which was about 25 years ago, was making falafel at a tiny vegan restaurant in Albany, New York called Dahlia's. Now back then, falafel wasn't as popular as it is today, which is good and bad. Good because falafel is delicious, it's healthy, and you can find it almost everywhere. But bad because there's a lot of terrible versions out there that no amount of sauce can fix. But today, Elle's going to show us how to make falafel at home the right way. That's right. We tried a ton of recipes in the test kitchen, and the worst of them were dense, like hockey pucks. Mm -hmm. They were dry and beanie and flavorless. But the best of them had nice brown, crisp exteriors, light, fluffy interiors, full of warm spices and herbs. Mm -hmm. Delicious. When they're good, they're good. Absolutely. So let's get started. First things first, chickpeas. Mm -hmm. This is our primary ingredient in falafel. And you want to stay away from the falafel kits that have ground dried chickpeas. They're terrible. We're soaking these because if you use cooked, you'd get hummus. Mm -hmm. If it were dried, you get flour. <laughs> exactly. Neither of which you want is something what we in want. the middle. Something in the middle. This is eight ounces of chickpeas. I'm covering these in two to three inches of cold water, and we're gonna soak them eight to twenty-four hours. So while these are soaking, we're gonna start with our mm, favorite condiment, yes, tahini sauce. Mm -hmm. Tahini is made with toasted ground sesame mm -hmm. seeds until it's ground into a paste. Has a nice texture, as you That's can see. That's a beautiful see. tahini. Yeah, it is. And we're starting with just a third cup. Now, to make a light, refreshing sauce for our falafel, we're just gonna add a few delicious ingredients, like a third cup of Greek yogurt and a quarter cup of lemon juice. Just that simple. So I'm gonna mix these together. I can't have a falafel without a nice hmm. sauce. I actually usually double the sauce and I put it on everything for a good couple <laughs> days. I mean, it's just delicious. All right, so it's a little thick. You can add up to a quarter cup of water to thin it out. And obviously the amount of water you add will vary depending on the thickness of your tahini and the thickness of your Greek yogurt. Oh, that looks good and smooth. Yeah, and we didn't change the texture too much, but we definitely added some creaminess oh. to it. This is making me excited about having falafel. <laughs> me too. Sooner than later. All right, so I'm gonna add a couple of pinches of salt for flavor, season to taste. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> That's so good. Now I'm more excited than ever for falafel. So I'm just gonna cover this. You can store it in an airtight container in your fridge for up to four days. All right, so these chickpeas have soaked. Mm -hmm. They're bigger than they were. Absolutely, and the texture's changed. You can kind of dig your nail in, you can pop it open like that. So it's just softened. Just softened. It's gonna do a lot for the texture of our falafel. So let's move on over and let's get started making the falafel with half an onion. This is about half a cup. I've had lots of falafel with great texture, but no flavor. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to achieve both. We're gonna pack these falafel with tons of herbs and warm spices. Three quarter cups of cilantro, three quarter cups of parsley. Lots of fresh <laughs> herbs. Lots of fresh herbs, it's super important. I love it when the falafel have kind of a green look to it, because you know it's gonna have some flavor. That's right. Two cloves of garlic minced, one and a half teaspoons of coriander, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Ooh, just a little kick. Just a little kick. All right, and so we're just going to create a paste out of this. I'm gonna blitz it for five seconds. All right, that looks great. Definitely more like a pesto. Nice. Yes. And now we can add the chickpeas. Oh, here you go. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna just pulse these Six times. Let's That's it. A, we'll see. Mm, not quite. Okay. There's some big pieces still in there. Yeah, there's still big pieces in there. We want the chickpeas to look like still cut oats. Oh, that's pretty big, actually. Yeah, it's pretty big. Not this big, but I'll blitz it six more times and see what we do. Oh, that looks great. Take a look at that. You don't have to grind it that fine. We already are going to add a binder to this, so we don't need to make a paste. Ah, so you can leave it kind of chunky. That's right. It will contribute to the airy, fluffy texture of the falafel. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So we're going to make a flour-based binder. So we have a quarter cup of all-purpose flour and a third cup of water. I'm just going to give that a good mix. 
And we're gonna actually cook this binder in the microwave. So you're gonna make a flour paste? Basically. Most falafels are made with a dry flour as a binder. That usually yields a dry, mm -hmm. dusty falafel. We don't want that. We're gonna use this cooked paste to bind our falafel without drying it out. Mm -hmm. And it'll brown nicely, which is key. All right, that's well mixed. It needs to go in the microwave for 40 seconds. So we're just gonna stir it every 10 seconds to check the texture. Right, make sure it doesn't get lumpy. That's right. All right, so this looks great. It cooked for 40 seconds, stirring every 10 seconds, and we know it's ready because it'll stand to a mound when dropped from the spatula. Mm. This is actually gonna add some moisture to our falafel, which never hurts. And we're gonna add two teaspoons of baking powder. This is gonna act as our leavener and give us light, fluffy falafel. We're gonna add this to our falafel mix. So just mixing it well. Oh, it really mixes right in there pretty easily. It really does. I wanna make sure it's all up and through here. It almost disappears. It's like you don't even know that it's there. All right, that looks great. Would you mind helping me roll out some falafels? No, I'd love to. So we're gonna use a number 30 scoop. Love these, make it so easy to get evenly sized portions so they cook at the same rate. We're just gonna go scoop here. Nice level scoop. And then just give it a little shape. And we're gonna get about 24 falafel. All right, now what shape are we going for today? Golf ball shape today. Oh, we're doing round ones. Yes. I've seen them shaped like pucks. Yep, but I like the round because you have more of that fluffy interior. The pucks, they get a little dry. So what's great about this falafel recipe is that you can actually form them and freeze them. Oh, so you can cook them off to order. Oh yeah. Look at these falafel. We did a good job. Your Dahlia skills paid off <laughs> today, girl. It kind of came back after a while. Get your groove back, I get it. Well, these look good. I think it's time to start frying it. Mm -hmm. We have two quarts of vegetable oil here and we've heated it to 325 degrees. It's very important to keep this oil at 325 degrees. So when we cook the first batch, the tint might drop. Right, because if the oil's too high, you'll get too much of a crust, and you'll okay. have sort of an empty inside, but if it's too low, it won't ever brown. That's right. So we're gonna fry this in batches. So we're gonna start with half. I like to lower them in with the spider. Just I on don't the safe blame side. you. Keep your fingers away from the oil. Yeah, and they're just gonna go for about five minutes. We're looking for a deep golden brown. I like to give them a little stir as they're in there. They don't stick together. And they'll start floating to the top the closer they get to being done. Okay, so the second batch is done. Oh, those are lookers. Oh man. Let's make some sandwiches. Yes. Mmm. I love all the condiments you have out here. Thank you. I'm mm. the condiment queen. Are you? Yes. So you got pita. One? Okay. Now, do you put a little tahini down in the pita? I like to get a little moisture down deep in the pita. Then uh, a little bit of lettuce. Cucumbers. Lettuce. Yep. And the tomatoes and the cucumbers start to release their moisture with that sauce. Heaven. Now, how many of these in a sandwich? I think three is the safe number. Yeah, three looks good because it fills it up nicely. Last but not least, a little more sauce. Top it off. Oh, that is a beautiful looking sandwich. Mmm. That's falafel done right. I love the heat from the falafel and the coolness of the cucumbers and the tomatoes and that lettuce. It's really that balance that's just awesome. Take that, Dahlia. <laughs> so if you wanna make the ultimate falafel at home, start by soaking dried chickpeas in water overnight. Using the food processor, make a spiced onion cilantro parsley pesto. Then add the chickpeas and pulse until coarsely chopped. Make a cooked flour and water paste in the microwave and add it to the falafel along with a little baking powder before shaping them into balls. Fry them in batches and serve with a classic tahini sauce and pita along with fresh cucumbers and tomatoes. From America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, a fabulous new recipe for falafel. Killer, Al. Thanks. I might have to move to the fork. I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna take this falafel out of here. <laughs> Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>